Unfortunately, my Facebook account is maxed out on friends now. Big apology to people that have been trying to send me friend requests and stuff. There's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. It's maxed out. So what I will try and do is just try and set up another page. Um, and obviously when I do that, I'll you know let you guys know and let everyone on Facebook know as well. Um, so apologies for that. Subscribers will know that this has been the only video this week. I do apologise about that, but it's basically because I've taken a little bit of time time out to kind of step back and just look at the way that I'm you know kind of producing these sorts of videos and stuff and I've just put a few things in place that's going to allow me to bring them to you more frequently just a kind of um, initial setup that sort of thing a little bit of editing bits and bobs I'll not bore you with that but it is for the greater good like I said this is the only one this week unfortunately but plenty more to come especially next week um, so please subscribe if you haven't done already and um, yeah it's um, if you think it's been busy so far, just wait to see what it's going to be like in a few weeks' time. Right, I said I keep a lot of you in touch with matches and stuff. A lot of you ask me all the time about how I get to know about matches and all that sort of stuff. What I did spot today was Riverfest. I know a lot of you are interested in that. Believe it or not, there are still some tickets available. All right, so on this list here, there are tickets for the River Weaver, the River Neen, the Medway, uh, the Yorkshire Ooze and... The lovely River Don at Sprotborough. So if anybody is interested in Riverfest tickets, there are still some available for those venues. I'll put the link below for you. There you go. I told you I'd tell you. Well, I've had a few questions coming again this week, which is great. So what I'll do is, before I go into those, I was fortunate enough to get out on the bank on Friday at Boston Lakes to... Um, to be part of the new uh, mini matrix masterclass video which will be going online i believe at the end of this month i'll obviously let you know when that happens but what i'll do is just give you a quick snapshot of how the day went it's friday morning and i'm gonna boston i get asked quite a bit about you know what sponsors and and people want back in return for for their investment in you one of them is just simply shooting features and stuff Today I'm going down to uh, Boston Lakes. I'm going to meet Craig Butterfield down there, where we're just going to uh, we're going to be filming episode four of the Matrix Mini Masterclass. Right down my street, we're going to be fishing a cage feeder for skimmers and bream, and just going through the way that I tackle these sorts of venues. So can't wait to get down there. The weather's rubbish, but you know who cares? If we're going to be catching some fish, it's you know it's a win-win. Right, well, it's finally stopped raining. Look at it, it's turned into a lovely day. This is peg 117. Absolutely, it's been a great session so far. Uh, like I said, the rain stopped. Just skimmers and, uh, and bream. Um, you're catching a few. I'm fishing peg 119. Sean's into one now on my tattle. Look at that. Never thought he could look any better looking than he, had, he was doing earlier. Now he's on my kit, look. No pressure, mate. Fishing two lines, fishing 18 metres. I'm going to tell you everything because I'd like you to really, really watch the, uh, watch the Masterclass um, video. I'll put a link to that below for you. Here we go, no skimmer. beautiful lovely we've had quite a few today the stamp's been um, smaller than average uh, smaller than usual to be honest just probably just over about a pound and a quarter for some reason but no it's been a cracking session we're using a mix you've not seen me use before and uh, obviously some of the new kits here as well that you'll get a chance to see if you uh, if you if you watch uh, from the link below but i mean as regards the fishery it's looking fantastic that's great looking uh, looking trying to look busy there we go, look, <laughs> he's been working hard today, he's going on holiday tomorrow, bless him, so uh, I'm sure he deserves it. There's a Boston Masters qualifier here tomorrow, so we've had quite a bit of interest, we've done a couple of live slots and um, people have also been asking about how we're catching and that sort of stuff, so like I say, I'll put the link below for you, I'll just give you uh, um, the full roundup and obviously the, the professional filming qualities of Mr Butterfield himself, um, of, the, of the master class. So yeah, we're just about wrapped up to be fair. I've got a big practice session tomorrow at Southfield Reservoir for the Super League um, Super League um, team match on Sunday. So we get back to Sheffield. Like I said, we're gonna get wrapped up. It's been a cracking day. And like I say, just click on the link below. That'll, that'll just show you the full masterclass of what we filmed today. But it's been a fantastic day, and it, it's just great to see and work with lads like this that really know the stuff, especially about the kit and stuff. So, so yeah, cracking day.
Well, I couldn't show you too much as you can appreciate because I really would like you to watch the video when it comes out. So what I'll do is I'll obviously, I'll let you guys know as soon as it's released, just so you can see it in all its detail about the kit that we use, the fish we caught, the bait, and all that sort of thing, and little twists and twists and tweaks and things that happen during the session um, so yeah interesting one for a lot of you guys especially you guys that fish Boston but for those of you that don't you know there's a few little hints and tips in there about just the way that I and a lot of the people I know approach skimmer fishing on that sort of venue right quite a few simple questions really this week just straightforward ones so I'm just gonna answer them nice and easy because I don't want to bore a lot of you guys that already know the answers to them so the first one was the first question was no, I'm not. I work Monday to Friday. No, fishing it to me is it's a pastime, but it's it means more than that to me. But who knows what the future will hold? Who knows? So the answer to that is no. The next question was I still keep getting asked what kind of cameras I'm using to all do all this sort of stuff. It's gotta be nice, quick, simple and easy. It's the only way I can do it. My mind's on my match, that's it. I use GoPro for everything. And as regards editing and producing, it's all GoPro Studio. Next question was Portugal this year's world feeder championships am I going to be there yes I'm going to be there no I'm not fishing everybody knows that no <laughs> I wish I was I am going there I'm not going to be there for full training week this year unfortunately but I'll be going out there on the Wednesday with Lee Kerry and Frankie Jam and Jelly and um, yeah we're going to be going out on Wednesday I'll be out there for Thursday Friday of training week Saturday and Sunday of the competition obviously I'll be bank running for the England team again and we're flying home on Monday, simple as that. So hopefully I'll see some of you out there. Next question was somebody who asked me this actually on the bank at the weekend. They saw me on a match and they asked me this. It was, why did I use the 3.6 meter or 12 foot S-Class when I was fishing on my short line at Southfield? I'm not gonna go into the, the match now because you know, that's just something by the by. But I was fishing at 30 meters. I had a peg to peg battle with Rob Wutan Hello Rob, because I know you'll be watching. Um, they want to know why I use a 12 foot rod when I was only casting 30 metres. My knowledge of the venue and experience of the venue is very much like Ireland. Yes, I was only casting 30 metres. The 12, I could have got away with a 10 foot rod even, but or an 11 foot rod would have been ideal. The reason why I stuck to the 12 foot S class was basically because I know what that venue is like. The conditions can change dramatically during a match and the wind was already threatening to get bad. I did that because if it did change, I would still be able to hit that range with the size and weight feeder that I wanted to use on that line easily, even if the weather got severe. And no, it didn't get severe. The next question was about hook sharpness. Asking me about what do you do if you think your hook's getting blunt throughout a session or what do you do if it's not a shot? I'm not sure if I've read the question quite right. If I have, I'm going to try and answer it the way that I read it or interpret it. Basically, it's really that simple that if you think your hook's going um, blunt or it's not as sharp as it was, change it. Just It's just not worth taking the chance. For the cost of a hook, you know, you stand the chance of losing one big fish or two or three fish or whatever. It could cost you a section, could cost you money, could cost you a match, it could cost you points for your team it's just not worth even thinking about it if you've got any doubts in your mind that that hook's not not right just change it that's why we carry so many hook lengths and things just because you know they're already tired it's quick and easy to change so if in doubt just change it and one that i've been asked is my dad's been fishing on the canal today and dennis if you're watching thanks for watching dennis i know it's rained a little bit today Dennis has basically said, will you please, please, please tell Jamie to put his disgorger either around his neck or behind his ear when he's fishing because he's fed up with seeing me catch a bream and having to go for it in my draw. Dennis, if you're watching, the reason why I do that is because I know a lot of you are eagle-eyed and a lot of you will notice this. The only time I don't put the disgorger behind my ear is when I've got hoods up because there's nothing worse than having it there and having two or three hoods up like we do at this time of year when it's rubbish weather. You're doing that, it's digging into your cap. I can't be doing with it. So if you notice when I've got my hood down... I've got the disgorger there. If not, it's just there, right by the side of me. And to be honest, a lot of the matches I fish, you're not using disgorger very often anyway. So, But well spotted, Dennis. I appreciate that. <laughs> and the final thing I really just want to quickly mention is um, the Feeder Masters Super League Round 1. That was on Sunday. A lot of you will know about it already. You'll have seen the result. I'll quickly hold the result up to you at the end of this. But we had a cracking first round. Our team of myself... Captain Wayne Bartholomew, um, Gareth Lambert and Steve Whitfield. We had a fantastic start to the competition. 
If anybody wants me to talk you through my match, I can do that, but I'm not going to do it here and now because it was all about a team event. You know, it's all about a team result, and it's not my team, but I'm so proud of what the Anglers did because of the way that they just had faith and belief in, in our approach, and it took a lot of, I think, discipline is the right word. Certainly from my point of view, in my match personally, it took a lot of discipline because I went behind quite early on in the match and you know discipline a massive part of discipline is belief in you know if you've got belief and confidence in what you're doing then that helps you to be more disciplined in your choices in, in, in about being patient and just being confident that you've, you're fishing in the right place at the right time and you've prepared that line right and that basically is what happened on Sunday fantastic result for us to win it like we did and it sets us up really really nicely with a 10 point lead um, over the ever consistent ringers who are fantastic I mean you know they go everywhere they do well wherever they go and nobody can take that away from them but that gives us a 10 point lead going into round two next month and uh, yeah what a position to be in so I know some of the lads will be watching fantastic event massive thank you to Lee Kerry and Mick Viles and Darren Viles because without them putting all that together the event wouldn't exist and I think I've got to mention Sona Bates for their I don't think a lot of people realised how generous they've been with their support their financial support and stuff for that event so a massive thank you to Sona Bates you know and I think everyone agrees it's it's the beginning of something very very big it's already big now and um, but yeah but in the meantime I said in my vlog last week that we were going out there to not only win on Sunday but to win that competition and nothing's changed nothing's changed yeah we did go and win on Sunday and you know we're, we're going off to a venue next month for those of you who are interested it's Ferry Meadows which is very much a drawback job so anything can happen there and with 15 peg sections it's still wide open but I mean what a position to be in you know super proud of the lads super um, but yeah I mean what a fantastic uh, what a fantastic match and hopefully um, things are going to keep going well for us so uh, so yeah that's really it for this week I, I can't really do too much I've got um Feeder Masters qualifier on Sunday at Ferry Meadows, the individual competition. I'll try and get some footage of that for you because uh, the nature of that match will mean that I'll be able to do it without it hindering in any way my uh, my you know my approach to the way that I'm going to fish it. So that's it. It's Friday tomorrow, as always, and I really hope you're all going to have a great weekend. The weekend after next is a three-day Southfield um, festival. Can't wait for that. So there's definitely going to be footage for that for you, and I know a lot of you're going to be watching it anyway. So. Thanks again for being patient this week. A lot of the subscribers, you know, you've only had one video this week, but that's because I'm, I've been putting things in place to bring you even more and in greater volume. So please hang in there. And if you haven't subscribed already, please, please get in. Honestly, just get subscribed up. There's going to be loads of ad hoc stuff coming in. Unless you're subscribed, you, you know, you could quite easily miss it. So uh, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. Great to see a lot of you on the bank again this week. And um, yeah, have a great weekend.